Let's get started. Thank you for joining me uh, for this video. Previously, I introduced the idea and concept of item response theory. And in today's video, I'm going to expand upon that topic to describe some of the basic item response theory models and specifically some of the specific item parameters we look at to help make decisions about items. So there are many different types of IRT models, and it really boils down to what characteristics of the items do we want to model. So as part of the item characteristic curve. So in item characteristic curve, a very simple and straightforward item characteristic curve relates our theta to our probability of response, so the probability that y is equal to 1, and it's this logistic monotonic curve that has some, if I can draw a curve, it's very hard for me to draw straight lines apparently, that has a lower asymptote down here of 0, an upper asymptote up here of one, and it has some that change across this. One thing to notice about the item characteristic curve is that it, this item characteristic curve is that it encompasses the whole range of possible probabilities for the item response. And you'll notice that this is for dichotomous items, where the outcome is 0, 1, yes or no, or we can categorize the response to only have two response options. And that is the kind of central theme of the models I'm going to describe today. It's how can we relate our underlying trait theta to the probability of a response. And because the probability is either 0 or 1, there are many possible unique complexities we can add to this. And so there's lots of different assumptions that we want, can make about this curve in this functional form um, that, that'll let us make inferences not only about theta or our construct, but about how theta relates to each item. So now let's think of a very simple type of item response model called a one parameter logistic. So now a one parameter logistic uh, geometric or graphically looks very, is identical to what I've drawn above to where we only have, we have our theta and we have our y-axis, which is the probability that y is equal to 1. And there's only one parameter that, <coughs> that determines differences between possible items. Let's extend these out to show that it really does carry the whole range of values. And so what this implies is that the one parameter logistic only differs with respect to what is called the location parameter, the location of each item characteristic curve. And this um, curve ends up looking like, or the functional form of a one parameter logistic contains one parameter other than theta, and that is the probability that y equals one given theta, which is constant, which is will be in all the models, and what we'll call beta. And beta will be our item varying parameter. It is what tells the difference between each item. 
and that is the expected value, or the uh, expect, yeah, not expected value, it's the uh, exponential function of theta minus beta i over 1 plus the exponential of theta minus beta i, where beta i is item difficulty. Where if you have a higher difficulty, then you typically um, will have a probability um, that is a little bit easier. And so, because you'll notice that it's minus probability, whenever you have a beta that is higher, that means that it's your expected value or the expected probability will be higher, meaning that um, values that tend to be over here, so high beta, have a high probability of responding one or correctly, where if you have a very low, low beta down here, you have a very low um, expected uh, probability of answering the item correctly or endorsing it in some way. So the one parameter model is really all about how, what is the one feature that differentiates the different uh, items. And so one of the extensions of the one parameter is what is called the two parameter logistic. Two parameter logistic, which here we have a very similar shape as before. An item might actually look very identical to as in the one parameter case, but there might actually be items that have a slightly different shape, such as this. And you'll notice that I'm drawing this very slowly and very linearly. It's almost like it takes a long time for a difference um, in the probability of response to change. Or you could have an item like this. Let's create a better color. There we go. where it's almost a like straight vertical line. And this is a really important feature to understand about does an item do a very good job or how does the item differentiate between values of theta? We call it this additional feature discrimination. Where we capture that in our probabilistic part of our model where the probability that y equals 1 now still depends on theta and on the difficulty but also on a new feature a parameter called alpha which is captured by a change in the slope of this line. And having the discrimination parameter be very high would correspond to this blue line. Having a uh, very low discrimination means the pro this curve would change very slowly, so this red line. Or the item might be pretty, um, what we could say, an average uh, discrimination, or it's a about what we would see according to a one parameter model. So there's these all these differences that we can come up with. And so that is the two basic idea or the basic idea behind two different types of item response theory models. One is the two parameter logistic model, 
which makes it so that the functional form relating the underlying trait value to the probability of response depends not only on the difficulty of an item, but also how discriminatory it is, or how fast does that item characteristic or change in probability across data. Whereas the one parameter model only differentiates it based on location on data. And those are the two big features that these two types of item response theory models helps to capture differences along our uh, trait that we're interested in measuring. And we're able to use that to help understand how items relate to traits. And thank you. Um, please let me know if you have any questions down below. I'd love to interact and help you answer any questions you may have. And I think there's a lot of interesting nuances we can go into with these, especially looking into different types of models that ha might have uh, different asymptotes that we'll talk about next time. Thank you.